Thank you so much for joining me. In this video segment, we're going to be looking at density. And it's really important to be able to con begin to conceptualize matter in terms of particles. It's almost like we're going back to Democritus and saying, okay, an atom is just a hard sphere. Okay, we all know an atom is not a hard sphere. But for purposes of representing our knowledge and our understanding, a little particle model can be very, very helpful. And we're, when we're talking about density, what you're talking about is a high density would happen when particles are very tightly packed. So within a given volume, you have a lot of mass. Okay, now at low density, there's going to be a lot more space between the molecules or the, or the particles. You're not going to have much mass in that given volume. And so it kind of gives you an idea of high density packed really tightly together and low density, you know, more irregular maybe, um, but certainly there's more space between the molecules. Okay, now. This is a good time to introduce what I think is a helpful problem solving method. Um, and it's called the guess method. No, we're not gonna guess at answers. What we're going to do is list our givens, check your units. So if you check your units within your list, then you don't have to worry about writing out the units in the mathematics. I know there are teachers who really like that and, and you need to follow what your professor or teacher does. I like to check my units right away, make sure they're all in agreement, and it cleans up my math a little bit, and I feel like I'm writing a little bit less while still showing all work leading up to the final answer so I can get complete credit, all right? So check your units, write down your equation, substitute, and solve. Now, you may want to solve before you substitute. For example, we have density as mass per volume, well, what if your volume was your unknown? You may want to cross multiply, say volume is mass over density or grams per density, if you want to simplify it. Um, it tends to be a little bit less writing than if you're having to do all that algebra with the numbers. So this is called solving a literal equation. So that substitute solve step, step can absolutely be switched. I actually prefer to solve before I substitute, okay? So let's take a look. This first one is very conceptual. This is not really as mathematical as you would think. So I have a metal block and it has a density of five grams per one ml and it is split. So that's like taking this block up here and splitting it in half. What's the new density? Well, what did we do up here? Isn't our new mass the old mass divided by two? And isn't our new volume our old volume divided by two? Hopefully you can see those twos cancel. I have the same mass per volume as I had before. And so what happens? the density remains unchanged, right? If I have 10 milliliters of water or I drink a gallon of water, the density of water at roughly four degrees Celsius is one gram per ml. Um, density is what we call an intensive property. It is independent, sorry, that looks like an H, independent of the amount of sample. Okay, um, just FYI AP, it's not just enough to say it's an intensive property. You have to say it's an intensive property that's independent of the amount. So the density is the same. So the density of this great big block would be the same. Now the volume changed, if we cut it in half, the volume changed of each half, the mass changed of each half, but the mass per volume remained unchanged. A very important concept about density. Okay, so let's take a look at a few of these. All right, 
Um, it's asking, what is my density? So density is my unknown. It gives me my volume of 35.7 centimeters cubed. That is, by the way, a very reasonable unit. So what you're typically going to use for volume is either milliliters or centimeter cubed. If it's a gas that's very spread out, you are more likely to see it on a per liter basis. Okay, so we've got our givens there. All right, let's list our other given, and it has a mass equal to 85 grams. List your givens. Step two, check your units. The question doesn't specify, so we're going to go with what is reasonable for a solid, which is certainly centimeters cubed. So now I write my formula. It's mass over volume. So it's 85 grams per 35.7 centimeters cubed. Since I've checked my units, I really don't have to put them in the mathematics there. That's kind of the beauty of that is you're writing less. So 2.4 grams per centimeter cubed for that solid. In this case, it says density is equal to 19.3 grams Per centimeter cubed. Asks me what my volume is and gives me a mass equal to 200.00 grams. So let's check out those units. So those are my givens. Let's check our units. This mass is grams, so this mass has to be grams. If I plug that directly in, that means my volume is going to end up a centimeter cubed. So now you write your formula, density is mass over volume, solve or substitute. I like to substitute before I solve. So I've got to get that out of the denominator. So I'm going to cross multiply. So volume is equal to mass over density. You can also think of opposite operation. This is divided, so the opposite operation is to multiply. So the volume would end up on top. Now this is multiplied. The opposite operation would be division to get it to the other side. So now I can plug and chug. Since I've already checked my units, I don't make my students write them in the math. There will be some teachers who do. Listen to your teacher not me, on those types of things. And I get 10, whoops, make sure I've got the right one. I get 10.4 centimeters cubed. Okay, three sig figs, five sig figs, go with your fewest sig figs. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. This now will solve for my mass. So I've got density equal to 13.4 six grams per milliliter. It says, what is my mass? So mass is question mark when my volume is 0 0.035 liters. Write your givens, check your units. Well, I have milliliters in density and I have liters in my volume. Those aren't the same. So we need to convert those liters to milliliters. Find your prefix, there's your one. One times 10 to the um, minus three, and I'm gonna get 35 milliliters. So list your givens, check your units. This time we have, if I'm solving for mass, volume times density is equal to mass, or you can plug your numbers in if that makes you feel better. Um, you know, there's a variety of ways to do the algebra portion of this. So I'd have 35 times 13.6. And when I do that math, I got 480 grams. Three sig figs, two sig figs. My final answer must be to two sig figs. So density calculations. 
The algebra can get tricky. I would say the trickiest, just be careful when you're solving for an unknown in the denominator. If you're one of my students, you may want to come see me and ask me to, I'll give you a little bit of a, of a help, uh, a mathematical way to solve that. All right, thanks for joining me. I hope you uh, were enriched in this discussion of density. Thanks lots.